Hello, everybody. My name is Jonathan Pariente, and alongside my broadcast partner, Pat Brown, as the Brooklyn College women's Bulldogs basketball season is set to kick off in just under three days from now on November 9th. First home game will be November 13th. We needed to bring someone along to discuss the Bulldogs and where they are going to be heading this year. And we could think of no one better than the head coach of the women's Bulldogs, okay. now in her second year on this team, Megan Campbell, former Bulldog, and now head coach, joins us here. Megan, it's a pleasure to have you, and uh, thank you for taking some time with us. Thank you for having me, guys. Let's uh, talk about last season. This was a uh, first year, a lot of expectations, a lot of, is Coach Campbell going to do be like Coach Lang? She's going to do the same thing Coach Lang did. And you came in, won your first title as a, as a coach, uh, talk to me about how it was to kind of get adjusted to the role of becoming a head coach and to be able to yeah. go all the way and win the CUNYAC title. Yeah, um, I mean, it was definitely a whirlwind of a season. Um, obviously, um, you know, looking back, it looks, you know, kind of like I was expected to do that. I was expected to step into the role and win a championship, um, you know, and from the outside looking in, it, it might appear that it was, you know, easily done um you know but there was a lot of work a lot of effort that went into that season um obviously being a first year head coach was you know extremely overwhelming at times you're dealing with you know not necessarily just practices and games you're dealing with you know new paperwork um you know all the entire operation of running a basketball team um so it was definitely overwhelming at times but I have a great um coaching staff that I lean on um, you know, anything I need, they're always there for me. They're constantly checking in on me, um, seeing if there's anything they could do, um, you know, to kind of make things go a little bit smoother. So I can't thank them enough. They're a huge part of, you know, why we have a successful program. Mm, absolutely. And, you know, it's, uh, we talk about how things can come full circle in a way, and it's very interesting like that. So one of your, co a few of your coaches that you brought in were, Nicole Francomano, Brittany Bowen. Uh, these are players you've played with over your career as a player. Yeah. The title was one of the things that is players that eluded you to win it as coaches after about 10 years. Uh, you know, just talk about what that meant to, to win it with players that you grew up playing with that now you're close friends with. And now all three of you are coaching the same team together. Yeah, it's extremely special. Even, um, you know, me is on the coaching staff as well. Um, although we didn't play with her, um, you know, she kind of was part of the team that started to set the groundwork for, um, you know, the women's basketball program and getting it to where it is today. Um, it was definitely special, um, you know, finally getting that championship, um, you know, as a head coach, um, you know, Nicole and Britt. Brits had one, you know, with Alex Lang because she was on the coaching staff. Um, but it was extremely special. Um, you know, it's something that we worked so hard to obtain as players. And like you said, uh, you know, we felt short, fell short of our goals. Um, it's something that kind of stays with you, um, you know, no matter how long you've stopped playing. It's something that, you know, stays with you throughout your life. Um, you know, there's a saying, um, you know, that that I remember a high school coach telling me when I was in high school, you know, when you're a champion, when you're a champion, you're a champion for life. Um, it's something that can't be taken away from you. And then on the flip side, you know, it's it's if you fell short, it kind of stays with you as well for the rest of your life. Um, so it is part of our motivation as a coaching staff. Um, we don't want our players to feel that they could have done more, um, you know, you know, whatever it may be, we don't want them looking back and saying, you know, we didn't reach our full potential because X, Y, and Z. Um, you know, and that's not to say as as a player, I look back with any regrets. I know that we left it on the floor. We just fell short. Um, but it's something we preach to our players that, you know, that you're working as hard as you can day in and day out, um, getting better each day so that, you know, you, you don't look back with any regrets, no matter, uh, you know, which way things may fall so absolutely talking with megan campbell head coach of the brooklyn college women's basketball team and uh there's no doubt the opponents you you play or you know nothing definitely the schedule hasn't changed as far as like the opponents you've played in going into your second year as well you're going to um you know talk about the the schedule you had last year uh 
facing teams like Smith, facing teams like NYU, and how that's helped prepare this team to really handle, you know, going into deeper into the season and as well as when you guys did make it into the NCAA uh, eventually last season. Yeah, I think it's extremely important to have a tough uh, non-conference schedule. I really feel that it helps prepare us um, for our, you know, playoff run, um, helps prepare us for our CUNYAC play. Um, so it's important to have a tough schedule. We ended up playing Smith and NYU, like you mentioned, uh, both teams that played in the national championship game. So, you know, that's, that's a pretty big deal. Um, it's nice to see kind of where you stack up against the competition as well. Um, you know, and, and where we want to be, like our goal is obviously to start competing at the national level. Um, so it's important to, to face opponents that, are well respected, um, and so we could see where we stack up against them. Um, same thing this year. We have a tough, uh, you know, non-conference schedule that we built, um, you know, with that intention of preparing us for uh, CUNYAC play. Um, and so it's extremely important. And then, uh, you know, even you, we talk about NYU and Smith. Um, there was a game against, you know, Jersey City that ended mm. up, in my opinion, being a huge game for us because um, it showed we went down uh, big early, um, you know, and in the fourth quarter, we ended up making a comeback. Um, and I think it ended up playing a factor, you know, in the playoffs that like, hey, like we're not out of this. Um, you know, we had a real tough game against Hunter. Um we could have easily put our heads down when we were down. Uh, we went down seven at one point. Could have put our heads down and said, you know what, like this isn't our game, but we fought back and we were able to overcome the adversity. And I, I think that Jersey City game, you know, played a big role in that um, mentally preparing us. Hmm. As Megan, so, oh, there we go. yeah, Megan, talk to me about the enormous pressure of having to repeat as a champion even though it was your first year and about how you dealt with that and how you kept that away from the players on the team so they could perform to their best. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, w it was definitely a lot of pressure. It was kind of like I mentioned, it's, it was kind of an expectation. Like I'm taking over a team that's won, you know, three straight championships. The team didn't change all that much. Granted we lost, uh, you know, Gianna Gotti, um, luckily we had Alina, um, transfer in, um, but it, it wasn't something that was, was easily done. Um, you know, Alina's a great player with, you know, brings a ton, uh, to our program. Um, but at the same time, you know, we had to bring her in, teach her the system. She did an amazing job, you know, stepping up right away. Uh, definitely was a leader on our team. Um, you know, it was a progress getting everybody, um, you know, playing to the standard that we wanted to be at. Um, so definitely a lot of pressure. Um, but at the same time, like I said, my coaching staff, I leaned on them a lot. Um, you know, a lot of highs and lows for me, uh, mentally throughout the season, you know, when you're losing a game or you have a bad practice, you know, as a first year head coach, I'm like, is it me? Like, is there something I could be doing better? Like, and, you know, just, Trusting in my mentors and, and my assistant coaches, um, you know, they talked me through it a lot. Um, and it, at the same time, I had to deal with that, but not bring it into practice. Like you mentioned, um, you know, every day in practice, we had to be on point so that the girls, you know, knew were focused and, and didn't have any doubts. So, Absolutely. As uh, now you head into the this new season and, uh, you're going to be bringing in a lot of new talent. Uh, it's going to be a very different team this year. Uh, both Erica, Sarah James, who were uh, key focal points of your offense last year, have graduated. Uh, you're going to bring back Estrella. You keep uh, Aaliyah Rafat for one more year, which is is going to be very big. Uh, there's going to be a lot of new talent, as I mentioned before. Um, of these new players, which, uh, which ones uh, really stand out that could make an impact right away? Um... You know, it, it's early right now. It's hard to tell. We have, um, like you mentioned, a lot of talent. Um, it's kind of seeing where those pieces fit into our offense. Um, at, I mean, our our program in general. Um, I believe that any of any of the, you know, transfers or incoming freshmen that we brought in have the potential to come in and make an, a, a pretty big impact. So, um, 
it's hard to single one specific person out um, yeah. or two people out, um, but it's ex it's exciting. So we'll see. Pat, anything you want to add? Oh, Pat, you want to add anything? I want to read that. Yeah, Megan. Yeah. So you, you talk about recruiting. What goes into how you recruit and what type of player that you recruit? Um. Yes. Yeah, so recruiting, it's actually something that I um, needed work on, in, in my opinion, like looking back when I first started recruiting. You know, I thought I was doing a pretty good job. I had, you know, X 20 to 25 recruits and, you know, no, I wasn't really getting too many commits um, early. So, you know, I, I had a conversation, you know, I constantly, I'm talking to Alex all the time. I'm talking uh, to Stan who I've, you know, been doing this a, a lot longer than me. <laughs> um, so they're like, yeah, you should have like almost double the recruits that you're recruiting right now. So like after I heard that, you know, they kind of, taught me certain things and like how to approach certain things. Um, and I adjusted the way that I was recruiting and, um, you know, I think it ended up, um, working out pretty well, um, with the recruits we have, we're extremely excited. Um, you know, with that being said, um, when we are looking for recruits, um, you know, it's important that we're not only looking for talent. Um, obviously we're, we are looking for the best possible basketball players that, um, we could bring in, but at the same time, um, one of the things we really focus on is, uh, you know, how they're going to mesh with our team. Um, you know, you could bring a great basketball player in, but if they, they have a huge ego, um, that doesn't really fit with our team. Um, it's somebody that we kind of, uh, shy away from just because, um, like Stan always talks about it. He's our leadership coach. He's been great for us, but he always talks about the ecosystem, right? So if, if you have like a fish tank um, that's thriving and you put one bad fish into that tank, you know, it could throw everything off. Um, so it's something, not only are we looking at talent, we're also looking at who's going to, you know, be able to come into our um, team and mesh well with the team as well. Mm. Talking with Megan Campbell, head coach of the Brooklyn College Women's Bulldogs. Uh, so of the, uh, we mentioned, well, of the uh, some of the new talk about some of these new players, um, you know, doesn't have. To, uh, I know we talked about who you think stands out, but like, um, what are your thoughts on some of the new talent that's going to be coming in this year? Obviously, a lot of new players, and uh, what are your thoughts on? And you think, um, how, what do you think of what they're going to bring as far as uh, this new season is con is concerned? Yeah. Um. So one of the big points of emphasis for us this year were was bringing in height. Um. You know, mm -hmm. SJ was amazing for us um, within our zone defense and just, you know, being a presence down low, she brought a certain level of toughness that, you know, was hard to find. Um, with that being said, she, you know, she did an amazing job. But when we get to the tournament game, she's now matched up against a six foot four girl that, you know, it's wow. tough to ask her to do X, Y and Z versus those type of players and then not get into foul trouble so that we could leave her on the floor. Um, so that was a point of emphasis is bringing in some height. Um, so with that, you know, we brought in, um, Fufu, um, oh, ZK. Who's been, yeah, who's been mm -hmm. a great piece for us. Um, you know, she, she's tough physically. Um, we brought in a freshman Noha, uh, she's about six one. Um, you know, she, she's been picking up things pretty quickly. Um, think she'll be great for us in our zone. And then, um, you know, we have Danae as well, who's, uh, I would say she's about like 5'10", super athletic, mm -hmm. uh, extremely long. So, you know, we kind of were a, we went out kind of searching for height. Um, and I think we did a good job of bringing height in, which is, which is going to be really big for us um, going forward. So the height piece is definitely there. Mm. Yeah, Megan, uh, Sorry for the background noise. I'm actually on my way to do something, but I'm going to miss this opportunity. Talk to me about replacing the Jane sisters and the scoring and rebounding that they gave you for four years. Yeah. Um. Obviously, it's not an easy task to replace them. You know, they're not really <clears throat> players that could be replaced. Um. But you try to find pieces that that fit. Um. You know, into those 
those pieces that were lost. Um, like I said, Sarah brought a level of tough, toughness that it's, it's hard to teach, right? It's not really something that's, you know, you could coach it as much as you want, but it's hard to, to instill it in players. It's, in my opinion, something that just comes natural. Um, you know, same thing with Erica. She brought pieces of, of her game that are hard to uh, find within people. With that being said, um, you know, there's, you know, players on the team that have developed uh, a ton over the summer. Uh, a couple of our returners, you know, Anna Kitch put in a ton of work. Um, she's in probably the best shape of her life. Um, she's moving quicker. The shot looks great. Um, Dior, believe it or not, um, looks even better than last year. So that's exciting. Um, you know, and then even our freshmen, um, you know, could help to a certain degree, fill those rules, um, you know, depending how quickly they pick up our system. Um, we also brought in a transfer student, Victoria, um, you know, from Farmingdale and mm -hmm. she could shoot the ball. So, you know, she'll be a huge, huge part of our game as well. Um, you know, in addition to the James sisters, we, you know, we lost Suli at the backup point, which, you know, it was, she, we didn't miss a beat when I put her on the floor. So, you know, that's a tough loss. Ayo, um, just her presence in, in practice and games. Um, and then Destiny, um, you know, as far as just bringing energy to the floor, um, you know, it's kind of, you know, um, unmatched. But Destiny's been in practices, you know, she's she's there, um, you know, still talking to the girls, um, you know, kind of getting on them a little bit, like, hey, let's go. So, you know, it's it's nice to see. Um, it, it's definitely tough losing those, those players, though. Absolutely. And definitely it's tough, but, you know, always every year is about finding the next players rebuilding and, and, but the great thing is continuing the, the leadership that you have. And one of the great things that I've seen with this program over the years, and I think it's a big positive, how important is it to retain some of the returning players so then they can take leadership roles and pass that on to the next group of players, and then they can pass it on to the next group and so on and so on. How important is it to have constantly that moving transition with each passing season yeah it's extremely important um it's actually you know we've it's funny we had this conversation um with our returners you know towards the end of last week um they just weren't i mean they've been practicing great throughout the the beginning of the season we have one bad practice um and you know i just kind of brought them in to keep them in check um you know we talk about um like what type of legacy do you want to leave, right? Uh, players before them, you know, have left a legacy of hard work, um, you know, competing in practice. And that's what, what we're challenging um, these next group of juniors and seniors to do is, is establish it now, you know, what type of legacy do you want to leave Brooklyn with? Was it, you know, a team that wasn't working to, to the best of their ability, or is it somebody that came in every day, competed, um, you know, and, and held everybody to the standards that we have as, as a team, so. Yeah, Megan, um, it's funny you say that about the culture. How do you fight against complacency, being that you've won four titles in a row and you have players on the team that have won two and three in a row? Yeah, um, it could be challenging at times, um, you know, getting complacent. Um, with where we're at, I think, um, you know, with losing the James sisters, um, I think some people, um, you know, it, it's finding different ways to motivate the players, right? So, you know, with the James sisters leaving, uh, people could turn around and say, oh, they lost two key pieces to to their team. Um, you know, they're not going to be as good as, as they've been in the past. Um, you know, I kind of, um, you know, challenge them. Um, you know, find ways to motivate them. Um, and the girls are, are super motivated themselves. You know, they're, it's not really like I'm, I'm searching for things, you know, to try to motivate them. Um, they're, they're intrinsically motivated at this point. Um, you know, they want to win just as bad as last year. It's no drop off really. Um, if anything, I think it's actually a little bit more, um, this year. So, mm. you know, it's, while it's, you know, tough to do it day in and day out um so far they've risen to the occasion so um you know it's it's not too tough to to hold them accountable 
talking with Megan Campbell, head coach of the Brooklyn College Women's Bulldogs. As uh, now you're in year two now, and uh, what were some things you have learned from year one that you're now going to bring into year two? And is maybe there something new you're going to bring in year two as coach of this program? Um, so a couple things I learned is, you know, and, and I said it to the players, um, you know, we can't get too high, can't get too low. Um, you know, when things are going good, it's easy to be all the way up here. Um, but it's important, like when things aren't going well, um, that we're still level headed, um, and focused on the task at hand. Um, you know, as a coach, I'm telling the players this, um, and it's important for me to do the same, um, you know, after a tough loss or something, um, you know, I kind of get, um, you know, a little bit like discouraged at times. Um, but immediately I, I go back to film sessions. I, I'll see what we could improve on. So that's, that's something I was learning throughout the season last year is, you know, don't, don't, um, you know, one bad practice, one bad game, um, does not define us. It's something that, that, we learn from and, and we improve on, um, you know, take it as a learning opportunity. So that was something I learned, you know, throughout the season. Hey, given the upcoming season, you know, it's fast approaching to start this, I believe, uh, Tuesday or what's, which day is the start? Uh, uh, we, our first game is Saturday, the 9th. Right. So what is your outlook on into this season. Where do you project this team in the conference, knowing that again your target is still on your um yeah so um obviously my expectation is high. Um you know we've been stressing it to the players uh for quite some time now. I think you know the front part of our schedule is extremely important. Um you know especially as you go into, um, you know, an NCAA, NCAA tournament game, you know, um, it does help with seeding and things like that. So we're stressing to them. Um, now we, we don't have, we, we don't have time to have any down days. Um, it's very important that like we come out, um, you know, strong from the beginning, we want to have a great start to the season. Um, you know, with that being said, um, we still have to handle our business in conference. Um, you know, the teams are get getting better. Um, you know, Hunter has has a uh, a great team over there. Uh, you know, with a good coaching staff. So they're, I mean, you know, I see them at the top, like uh, kind of as our top competitor uh, for next season. Um, John Jay's bringing back, um, you know, a decent amount of people. Um, so it's going to be an extremely competitive uh, conference this year, and it's important that we start out strong um, and maintain throughout so that you know, um, we don't have any drop up, drop off going into conference play. Um, so that's extremely important. Mm, absolutely. Um, if there were, uh, if there was any words of, uh, wise words of wisdom that coach Lang had given you when you went into your first year, you won the title and now going into year two, was there any, what was something that really stuck with you from coach Lang to really get you prepared to coach your first season? And now, you're bringing that over into year two. Um, that's tough. You know, I, I talk, to, talk to him a lot. Um, you know, just, um, I would say in terms of like preparation, um, you know, just diving into film and, and, you know, having, um, you know, as much knowledge about the other team as possible, um, is important. It makes you feel comfortable going into the game. Um, you know, one big thing for him, um, you know, that that he always preached was actually recruiting, right? Uh -huh. Recruiting, um, you know, you want to have uh, people coming into the program, you know, that are that are ready to to contribute, um, you know, and and build upon what you're you're you've been building. So I think um, those two things kind of stick out. As you guys will get ready to play your very first game of the year, uh, November 9th. I believe that game is going to be Stockton. Am I, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. Let me double check. Yes. It is Stockton. All right. So this is an opponent, a very familiar opponent. It was your first game you played against last year. And, um, and this is an opponent that's, uh, the NJAC conference is a, is a very competitive conference, no doubt. 
Uh, you guys are also going to travel to California this year, taking on Chapman and Whittier. Uh, this is a team uh, Bulldogs played about five, six years ago. Um, so uh, why did, well, why these opponents and what, what was uh, – these guys have all been in the playoff and in, into the NCAA before. These are tough opponents that you're going to see during the year. Um, so what was uh, – why make why why face these teams this year? What was the uh, decision to face these teams and and yes. and obviously NYU as well? Yeah, so um, you know Stockton, we opened up against them last year. Um, they were a tough competition. I'm expecting the same thing this year. Um, you know they have uh, a decent amount of returners coming back. Um, so we we stuck with that. Um, NYU, um, like I said before, it's a it's a comp competitive program number one in the nation right now um so we want to see where we stack up against that type of talent um and then as far as the california trip um you know it's it's exciting um you know we haven't really been on a on a trip like this you know in in a couple of years so it's exciting for the girls it's exciting for the coaching staff and like you said they're two extremely competitive teams you know um that once again are going to challenge us um you know, and it helps us see see where we're at as a team, um, you know, going in, into conference play. So um, those are that's the reason that we um, chose that trip and, and those teams specifically. Um, we knew it, it'd be a challenge for us, uh, and we wanted to see where, where we were at. Get you out of here on this last note. And uh, it has been an incredible year with the rise of women's basketball as a whole. We have seen now the arrival. I'm, I'm bringing in the WNBA on this note. The Liberty won the WNBA title for the first time in their history. We have seen the arrival of Caitlin Clark. We have really slowly now been watching the WNBA and really women's basketball as a whole really beginning to go on an upward descent, an, an upward ascent, which is really incredible. When, when you see how much the game of women's basketball has now evolved and now you're a part of this, uh, this new, this change, uh, just talk about how much you have seen in the change of women's basketball and, and how much, and how much better you you continue to, to bring that change here with Brooklyn. Yeah, it's extremely exciting to see, um, you know, we're finally getting our flowers. <laughs> um, <laughs> I remember going to, to Liberty games, at, uh, when I was younger, um, you know, not a lot of fans could get seats, you know, right away, pretty cheap. Um, and then they played up in Westchester, I believe. Um, and that, I mean, you know, it's it's kind of shocking. Like you've seen like the memes and stuff like flashing to the Westchester arena and then like to where we are at today, which is, you know, amazing to see, um, you know, Caitlin Clark, um, a ton of it's, we could attribute it to that. Um, but there's a ton of talent in the WNBA, um, you know, a lot of people uh, do enjoy watching women's basketball because it is a, a little bit more about X's and O's um, and strategy as opposed to men's basketball. You could get away with an athletic team just doing more athletic things. Um, but when you come to women's basketball, it's, uh, you know, a little bit more strategy based, um, you know, not taking anything away from the men's game. But um, that's, you know, a positive on, on our end. And it, I think it's just going to, you know continue to rise from here. Uh, there's a ton of talent right now um, in college, just, you know, waiting to showcase, you know, what, what they have, um, you know, so it, it's going to be a fun next couple of years for sure. Uh, I think it's great. The next one's coming. Paige Beckers is coming up this year. I believe Juju Watkins is not too very far behind. So, and we already yeah. have Sabrina, we already have Caitlin Clark and we already have, you know, and, we already have Angel Reese, so the the league is really evolving, and it's great to see just how far the WNBA has come. Of course, one of our former Bulldogs, Ali Mugan, is working with the Liberty as we uh, now, and has really done a tremendous job as well of turning that program into a positive. And it's great to see it all, all, all throughout. Yeah, um, sure. yeah definitely. Ali um, actually um <laughs> was able to get um us a suite this year um oh to, wow yeah to go see see one of their games so that was an, a, a great team bonding we ended up getting to go onto um you know the court um 
you know, one of our rivals, um, but a former alumni uh, from Baruch College, Kristen Popovich. Pavlovich, yep. <laughs> so she, she works as well, um, which is really cool to see, you know, Allie doing her thing. Um, you know, it's it's definitely a highlight of our program. Um, you know, it's and she she comes around, you know, she she's kind of like a mentor um, to a couple of our girls um, that I, I put them in contact because I said, you know, this is one of our alumni. Um, this is what she's doing outside of Brooklyn College. That's something we really preach to our our players is that, like, obviously we want you to become the most successful basketball player that you could be. Um, but at the same time, the ball stops bouncing at some point. Um, so it's what you're going to go on to do outside of, you know, Brooklyn College that that really matters. Like, what tools are we giving you um, to have success in, in the real world? So Absolutely. Well, Megan, I can't say enough that me and Jonathan are very much looking forward to watching you guys continue your pursuit of excellence and continue the culture. And just want to say thank you for taking the time out. Thank you. Uh, we're excited as well. And thank you for all you guys do. We appreciate you. Always, Megan. Thank you so much. And good luck to the Brooklyn College Women's Bulldogs. Their season will kick off November 9th. We will have the first home game on November 13th at the West Quad. And we hope everyone will please come out, support the Brooklyn College Women's Bulldogs, as they will come out to defend their CUNYAC championship. Coach Campbell, thank you so much. And best of luck to this coming season. Thank you. Have a good one. All right. That was head coach Megan Campbell of the Brooklyn College Women's Bulldogs. A little bit later today, we will have the men's head coach for the Bulldogs, Jeffrey Jean Baptiste. He will join us and give us his take on the upcoming season for the men's Bulldogs. But for right now, Jonathan Pariente, alongside my broadcast partner, Pat Brown, we thank Megan Campbell for joining us. We wish you all best of luck, and we'll see you guys on the court next week at the West Quad. Have a Thanks good one, again. everybody. Bye.